So the annotation has been finished. So if you do an ls, you will find that a directory has been created. And this is a directory. It was created because of the prefix option we used. This directory contains the files that were generated by Proca. So let's ls into that directory. And these are the files that were generated. A description of these files can be found on the GitHub page of Proca. So please visit that page. I will leave the link in the description box. So this leads me to the next part of the video where we explore some of these files to get some information for us. So let's first cd into that directory. Now, we will focus on just um, this, 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 and then this. So let's begin with this one. The dot fa contains predicted proteins, and this one here contains transcripts. But we can also see that the predicted genes. So what we have is that this one here was formed from translating the CDS sequences, and so the number here also indicates um, the number of CDS sequences we have. With a genbank file here, which is the .gbk, it gives detailed information. And so for this particular one, you can use tools um, such as BioPython, which is a library in Python, to help you read and extract the information from it. I have videos on how you can read genbank files using Python, and I'll leave those videos. I'll leave the links in the description box. And this one, can be read with spreadsheet software so that you can quickly um, explore it. And I'll show you how we do it um, later on. So let's focus on this one here first. So this is a faster file. This is also a faster file. So if you're looking for the predicted proteins, this is where you find it. So let's begin by looking at the number of predicted proteins, or let's see, and the count of CDS. So to do that, we issue this command grep, which is used to find patterns in names or in text files. And then we specify the file, which is agy99.faa. We are using some simple bash commands here to do the exploration. And then we say wc-l. So what we are doing is that we are looking for what the occurrence of this symbol here. Faster files begin with this symbol. This is a multi-faster file. And so each of those sequences will begin with this symbol. So we counting the number of this also gives us the number of sequences. And that is what, um, why we are using this particular command. WC-L will count the lines because when we do the counting, the bash will return everything and all the heads in different lines. So once we count the lines, we know how many sequences are there. So let's run it. We have 5471. Let's do a head command to get the first five lines of this file so that we can better understand it. So this is the first five line. These are the predicted proteins. But of course, um, during the exploration, it's not just about counting um, the number of sequences. We can look for specific names. Let's just say we want to look at the hypothetical proteins. We can say grep. Hypothetical. Let's add hypothetical. And we indicate the name.
and we run it. This will give us the hit. But then, because there are several lines, one of the things we can do is to just do the count. So if you are to do the count, this is where the wc-l comes in. So we can just issue the same command. Bring our pipe and say wc-l. So now we have what? 2516 hypothetical proteins. We had them here using this here. We can also go into details to find specific proteins. So let's say we are looking for SIGM. We can say grep SIGM. I will use this to demonstrate something here. AGY99.FA. Now, when we issue this, this is what we get. But these are what? Amino acids. And so it means that there is something wrong with our query here. Bash is case sensitive. And so you need to make sure you have specified the correct name here. So here the correct name is this one. And so we get the hits again. So if you are using the graph, you can also choose to ignore um, the cases. Then Bash will return any hits, no matter um, the case it is in, whether it's lowercase or uppercase. So in this instance, if let's say we did this command here, dash i, to ignore all cases. Let me issue it correctly here. It's lowercase here. Then we are going to have all the names appearing, regardless of the case. So now we can know um, what is happening. But you should be careful um, so that you don't put in wrong terms. So when using the grep, try and then use the appropriate or the correct terms um, that you are interested in. So uh, these are some, some exploratory um, activities we are doing with just the bash script. So that is for the dot fa files. Let's go to the dot ffn. If you are looking for what um, the number of transcripts or let's say and the predictor genes, number of predictor genes, let me put it that way, then we can also use this one here. So we can do a grep. It is also a faster file. So um, I have a video that shows how you can read faster files using Python. So um, I will leave those links in the description box. So please try and then watch that as well. So we can say grep and we indicate this one here and we say wc-l and we have the counts there five five two three let's look at another one here let's use a term let's just use any term here as well we have gen let's do some playing here we have some information here so at least um, this one what is returning is not what we expect it to. So again, I'm only using this to demonstrate um, why you should be careful when using the grep command. So try and be accurate as much as possible. Now, this is for what the dot ffn file. Let's look at the agy.tsv. So this one, you can use a spreadsheet software, but let's just do a quick one here. Let's see head agy99.tsv to get it. So when you view on a spreadsheet, you have the local stuff, the feature type, the length, the gen number, products, and other information here as well, so that uh, you can use that um, to understand uh, your genomes better. So and there's just another way to um, explore this particular file here. But let's open it in a spreadsheet software. So let's go to the desktop and then um, look at how 
it appears when you use the spreadsheet software. So this is what tab separated values. Again, you can use Python to also open such files. So let's go to the desktop. So this is my desktop and this is the directory um, that was generated. And inside it, you have the files here. We are looking at the um, .tsv here. So let's open it with any spreadsheet software. I'm using this tool here. And this is what comes up. Let's zoom in here so you can get it better. So using this one, you can also read and then try to get some information as well. So of course here gives you the feature types and their um, associated or their respective um, information. So let's even do a sort here or let's filter. And then when we use a filter and you can just um, filter based on feature type. So at least this one also lets you know which features were predicted at a glance. So at a glance, we know that CDS, we have this, we have this, we have this. These are the features that were predicted and for us by broker. And it is this same information you will find in the GenBank file. Just that the GenBank files give additional information, but these are the features that will be present there and we have their respective counts there as well. We have for CDS 5471, RNA, tmRNA, tRNA, and all those ones there. So um, this is also very helpful. So that is it.